gosh, I'm going to be quiet now. You guys go ahead. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I'm going to pin or um, spotlight this video real quick. Does the iPad look big to you guys? Yep. Perfect. Okay, sweet. So today we're going to go over um, the picture of the chair that Leah sent out to the chat. Did you guys all get that image and have it saved to your camera roll? I think so. Okay, perfect. So I think so. I just saved it. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, so before we get into making a canvas like we've done before, I wanted to show you guys, we're starting to get enough drawings that you might want to start and organize them a little bit. So I wanted to show you guys um, how to organize some of your artwork on Procreate. So right now I'm in a folder that are like they call them stacks of all of our like Procreate classes, class drawings. Okay. But if I leave this stack, this is all of my other drawings. So there's a lot more in here. So how do we get to the front page there? I'm stuck in an old picture. Okay. So if you're in a canvas, like if yeah. you're in a drawing, uh, there's a little gallery button. Yeah, I'm pressing that. Nothing happens. Nothing's happening? No. Hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it's just stuck. OK, I might try either like completely exiting out of your app or maybe turning it on and off again. It sounds like it's frozen if it's not yeah, it is frozen and this is silly because it's a new ipad mm -hmm. and it this. okay i'll i'll go out okay i remember how to yeah and sometimes it could help if you exit completely out or if you have multiple tabs open you can just i don't out of them I, I, that's the only tab i have open okay uh, now i have to find where to close it down I totally forgot about this iPad. Is it working when you're doing it with your um, pen or is it no, I'm doing not it funny with touching with your finger either? No. That, how do I turn off the iPad again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the elementary. I'm so sorry that I'm distracted. <laughs> do you have um do you have an iPad with a home button or an iPad without a home button? without so i believe okay i believe you hold the upper volume button and the side button i believe and then you hold them down at the same time okay. yeah Probably. is that working not yet but i'm trying it now it does okay thank you yeah sorry to be so distracted um, with my stupid uh, tech shit you're good. No, Diana, these are fine questions because my iPad is new and yeah. I'm still figuring out the buttons like. <laughs> so Diana, there is no such thing as a stupid question. And the best thing about you is that you're quick. So you get to the question quicker than everybody else. And everybody <laughs> else has the same question. So don't worry. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of refreshing to hear Diana ask the questions. Usually, we're asking Diana questions, so. Seriously, right? <laughs> um, um, does it look like it might be working now? Let's hope. Yeah, now I'm at the gallery. Oh, perfect. Okay. Is everybody at the gallery? All right. So I can show you guys how to stack your paintings. So I have a landscape drawing here and a landscape drawing here. I think they're kind of similar so I can like see how they could be stacked together. So all I'm going to do is hold down. You can do this with your pen or your finger. And now I can drag this around. And if I want, I can change the organization so I can put it in between these two drawings and it can move my drawings around the gallery. So if you want to organize it that way, you can. Is that working for everyone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So then if I want to stack them, I can take one drawing and I can put it on top of the other and it should glow blue. And then if I let go, 
It's going to stack them. Mm. Mm. And I can then name that stack. So if I touch where it says stack, the little text at the bottom, it'll bring up naming selection. You can scribble that out. And I can call this landscapes. And I'm done. Does that work for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Can you un can you stack unlimited numbers of things? I have not discovered a limit yet. So if there is a limit, I think it's pretty high. And then you can just click in there, and then you can see those drawings together, sorted like that. Um, I missed the part about how do I change the name of the stack? Oh this yeah. Stack. I go out here. So it pro does it say stack underneath your picture? Yes. If you click on that text, it should bring up like a little keyboard. Oh, yeah. So I have a stack here. I haven't actually named it. I'm really bad at naming things. If you look at my gallery, everything is an untitled artwork. <laughs> but I can name this stack the Procreate class. Then if I click into here, then I have all of our class stuff. Do you guys feel ready to start on making a canvas? Perfect, okay. I do. So I'm going to go to the plus sign on the upper right side of my canvas and it brings down all the options. Um, the very first day of class, we made a Procreate class canvas. It's an eight by 10 inch canvas. You guys can use that if you want. Um, if you weren't there for that. The class, one that says P3. P3. Um, yeah, I guess it is. Okay. It says, okay. Screen class size three. P3, 1668 by 2388. Oh, there is something called project at the bottom that's eight by ten okay mm -hmm. okay that. perfect um if you don't have that you can also do screen size and that would also work it's the very upper one so i'm going to do the eight by ten and it should open up something like this did that get opened up for you guys mm -hmm. um if you opened up the screen sized one it might look more like this. Um, if that's the case, you can just pinch it down and rotate it to the side. Sweet. Are you guys ready to import our photo? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to click on our wrench right up here. And then there's an add button, the little plus sign. I'm going to make sure that I'm in that section. And then insert photo. It should bring up your camera roll. Oh, shit. Then... It didn't save to my camera roll. Shit. Oh. It didn't save to your camera roll? No. I have to. I have to send it. My, mine, took a, mine took a second. I had to, I think, close the camera roll and reopen it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, you know, I restarted mine, so it should really have Oh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'll see if I can do it again. Yeah. Did it, if you could try sending it, if you have it on your phone, you could airdrop it to your iPad too. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. Did, um, is it safe to everyone else's? Did you guys get it on here? Yeah, I got it now. Oh, I got it. Okay. So it's a pretty small file right now. It's, so it's gonna look pretty big, small on the canvas, but you could either go fit to canvas or I usually like to kind of zoom in and choose my composition. Um, I make sure there's no white spaces and make my chair pretty big because it is the subject so and I'm just doing this just by pinching and turning it at whatever angle I want I'm 
Emma, is it okay if it's fuzzy with the quality of the photo? My, uh, yeah, mine is so much darker than yours. Interesting. We're going to actually edit um, the photo to make it a little bit lighter, too. Um, it's super dark, the one I have. I can't, I can't make out the chair. I can't make out the bottom of the chair. Okay. Um, when we change the um, lightness of it, we can see if it changes enough that it works for you. Yeah, that's how, that's how it came in the thread. If it, it doesn't, very... we might, um, if it doesn't, we might switch out it. Okay. Yeah, we can try that. Um, it's probably a little bit fuzzy because like the photo's this big and we brought it up this yeah, big. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't like have like a wrong canvas size or something. Thank okay. you. Um, so when you guys are ready, and you like the composition, I'm gonna click on this blue arrow. Right now it's blue, but we wanna deactivate it. And once we do that, it should be set. And now it's just attached to our canvas. Sunny. No. Okay. So how do we deactivate it, did you say? Um, it's your blue arrow at the top. Okay, so okay. Does that work for everyone? Yeah. Cool. So let's try changing um, the lightness of our photo and see if we like it. And if not, I don't know, I bet we could pull up. We had a few different options of chairs, so we could see if it gets like another one better. Um, but to do that, there's gonna be a little magic wand looking. Mm -hmm. And it should bring up a whole bunch of options. All of these are pretty fun. So I actually recommend if you have time, actually, do you guys want to spend some time doing this real quick? This is kind of fun. Uh, I'll show you some of those things that it does. Um, one of those is noise. If I click on noise, it's going to look like it didn't do anything. But if I take my finger or my pen on the screen and I slide it, it's going to make it look grainy. Yep. So you can make some cool layers do. Oh yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, if I don't like that, I can just undo. I tap with two fingers. We can go back and bloom is kind of fun too. It makes like everything look really glowy. So where which one is that? Is that um, which one is tab is that under? Oh. It is under bloom. And it's... Um, oh, under bloom. So I, I would give you guys, if you want to take a few minutes, anything between, I would say, Gaussian blur and chromatic abrasion. Try, um, try any of those and see what they do and see if you find anything you like. They're kind of fun. Ooh. Wow. The motion blur is kind of fun too. Do you guys find any interesting ones? No, I'm trying to adjust the, the, the motion blur is really fun. <laughs> yeah. I could see if like you were writing a comic and you watch like a really fast looking picture. So, like use that. Ooh, glitch is crazy. <laughs> oh yeah. Whoa, I haven't tried the glitch one. That Isn't is that weird. weird? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it looks like it's like bottom. a computer glitch or yeah, like a TV screen glitches. Yeah. Could you imagine like painting that? That actually would be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. To if paint it. To... Oh, shoot. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really fun if you wanted to do something like that. You could 
edit a photo mm. here and make that your reference photo. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of people who do it, I know. <clears throat> the half tone one is really fun too. The half tone. Is that the one that has like the little dot textures? Yeah. Oh, I love that one. They also have like a little newspaper. Oh, one. <laughs> that's like a Chuck Close painting. Yeah, I love that. I love making it so that you can't really tell what it is. But then mm -hmm. Is there anything that uh, has contrast? Yeah, so we can yes. go over that here next. But yes, uh, so that's what we're that's what that's what this thing is for is we thought we'd practice fixing the contrast on this mm -hmm. to see if we can get the legs of the chair out. Got a little distracted with some of the features. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, yeah, just <laughs> yeah. So those are all really fun to play with. Um, there's also some different options in here that maybe we can go over a different time that are pretty fun to do too. Um, but yeah, so let's go to, if we go to the very first option, it's hue, saturation, and brightness. Yeah, yeah, it was there, but it doesn't help with the contrast. Oh, let me, yeah. It does not. Maybe there isn't contrast. I thought that there was, but... Diana, can Maybe. you send what you're, as you're trying to fix it, can you send a picture over the thread of what you're looking at? It's hard to see this over the, um, over yeah, the. Yeah, I have, I mean, I have, I have um, uh, fixed it as much as I can, but I need more contrast. I mean, it, it's pretty self-explanatory when it comes to the yeah. colors and stuff, uh, but I can take a picture of what mine looks like. I um my computer attached to AirPods that aren't mine, so I missed that real quick. Um, what did you say there? She's gonna send a picture over. She's trying to work on the contrast. Yeah. Leah asked her to send a picture of what she's yeah. got there. Yeah. Okay. I want to see what it looks like. But mind you, it's some some lines in it that's not mm -hmm. really there in the picture. Okay. It's just because I take a picture of the iPad that it gets like those lines in it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to go back to our class. Okay. Did um, you get the hue, saturation, brightness pulled up? Oh, I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is pretty dark. Yeah, it's very dark by the legs. And, you know, my original picture was super dark. Mm -hmm. The, the one that was sent across the thread. What do you think, Leah? Um, let me look. I mean, you can make it out, but... Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I see those weird little lines there. I mean, I think yeah, those are not there in real. They they not there in real life. Right? Can you? I think that's okay. I think you can now see the legs. Um, Basically. Uh, and uh, you can now see the legs. And um, and can Emma? Can you play with the drawing to uh, tweak out the painting to make the contrast better? I could do it not on Procreate and send it over. Like I could just oh. edit it in the roll. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's the best thing to do. Why don't you take a minute to do that while I and send it across the thread while I get your uh, the student who's I have a student that's having trouble getting in, so I need to get I need to focus okay. on. Okay. So, so what is the sharpen? Would that do it? The sharpen button? Um. Yes, sharpen would uh, would help you, with Diana. I also tried it. It's as I mean, it'll give you some effect of contrasting. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'll try that. Okay, so I'm going to edit this in my camera roll real quick. You guys, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys know how to do this, but I'll just do it on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. I'm also doing that. <laughs> but how, how do you use the sharpen? Do you have to use it with a pencil or? Um, it should just be like the other way. Break it. No, it says sharpen zero percent, and when I click on that, it comes plus layer or pencil. So go on layer and do that. Uh, I mean, use that, not pencil. Okay. Mm 
How do I get out of uh, zero percent? So here, I'll show you here. So if I go to my wand, sharpen, it says zero percent up top, right? Yeah. So if you take your finger and you slide it across the screen, it should adjust it. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to lift up. I that. don't get the button, though. There isn't actually a button. Um, it's just, I'm just taking my finger. Oh, OK. I see it. I see yeah. it. It does work. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do anything, but it. I think the sharpens like a very subtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. The darker it goes, the less, the less sharp it gets. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. Yeah. It's at least it's good to practice, but I think it's it's too subtle to actually do anything. Does this? Can you guys see this? But okay, do you guys? Yeah, you are. I mean, I don't get it because your share is has contrast, but the one that was sent on the thread does not. Interesting. Okay. Well, here I'll send this photo through the group chat real quick, and then hopefully it looks like it will work. Yeah, yours is sharper. Oh, I see the one um, gosh, me sent. That one also looks like. Do you think that one referred to you, Diana? I edited it. Um, so just it's edited yeah. on Snapseed. So yeah. It's... And then Leah, did you see the chat about Abby trying to get in? Okay. That's what I've been working on. Perfect. <laughs> 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 Takes a village. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um. So. Oh, do we get Abby? She's in. Hi. Welcome. So, Abby, I'm so sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I'm gonna talk to you after class to find out what you actually, how you got that link, and not the one for the class. We'll talk about that. Um, but Emma, can you quickly catch her up on uh, what she needs to do? Yeah, I think oh, yeah. Be perfect because we just edited this new photo that we're going to import, so it should be it, your your quad, The one you sent is much better than the one we had. Oh, perfect. Well, of so course, the one you start? had, um, the one you had was not edited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're we're not editing it. the one that I sent was not edited. So this one is edited. Like I asked Emma, can you edit it in Procreate? And that's where we, that's why we are where we are. Um, but, but you can't, can. you can't get it good enough. You can't get it good yeah. enough. That's the end of the list. Yeah, that's the end of that. So how, how do we, how do we start over? Well, so we'll go over that real quick. Yes. Do you guys all, did you guys, are you able to get this new photo um, saved to your iPads? Yeah, I did. Working on it. Okay, <laughs> perfect. I'll give you a little bit of time. There. Okay, I'll go back to screen. When you guys have them downloaded, do you want to give me a thumbs up? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Downloaded. Okay. Do we go back to gallery then? So we can actually open up in the drawing that we already have. So okay. I'd open up what you have. Okay. So let's see, are you guys, do you guys feel ready? Yep. Perfect, okay. So if we click on these two little squares at the top, it's gonna show us our layer. Yep. yep. So when we imported our photo, it imported it on a new layer. So yep. we can actually just remove that layer. So if I swipe to the left, it's going to pull up some options. And I'm going to click clear. Yeah. And we should be brought back to having a blank canvas. Okay. Yep. And then Abby, um, do you do you, have you opened up a canvas before? 
Perfect. Okay, do you have a Canvas open? Sweet, okay. So I believe we're all ready then to open up our new photo. So we're gonna go back to the wrench, right next to gallery. Going to click add, insert photo, and we can click on our new one. Yeah. And then once again, it's gonna be pretty small on our canvas. Um, so it's probably gonna be a little bit pixelated, but the good news is when we draw it, we can make it not look pixelated. Um, so now I'm just gonna scale it up. So to do this, I can either pinch the image like that, either pinch it and I can rotate it like this, or I can grab it from the corner like this. So I'm gonna zoom in and I want the picture to take up the whole canvas like that. And I also, I can zoom in more if I want my chair to look bigger and kind of decide mm -hmm. what that. No, Find like something like this. Okay. So we know. And how do we remove the previous photo that we had uh, imported earlier? Yeah. So um, if you go to your layers, mm -hmm. do you see um, two layers and one of them is the new photo, one of them is the old photo? Yes. Perfect. So if you go click on your old photo, so it's lit, in, lit up blue. Yeah. And if you swipe to the left, it should oh. give you clear. Oh. Mm -hmm. Did that work? No. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, and for everyone who, uh, after you've moved in your picture, to deselect your selection tool, so the little marching ants around your photo, um, you just want to click on your blue arrow one more time so that it's no longer lit up blue. And then it should be attached to your canvas now. So how's that looking? Good thing. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to trace our photo. Can you hang on just a second? I want to make sure Abby is starting to get caught up here. Are you, Abby, do you have the new photo and the WhatsApp link? And do you have that up? We're working on it right now. Yeah, okay, got it. All right. <laughs> okay. So um, we're going to trace our photos like we've been doing in the last few like classes. Um, and right now it's pretty dark. So if I started tracing with black over here, it's going to kind of get hard to see in these areas. So I just want to lighten my photo. So when I'm tracing, I can see it. And how did you lighten it? Oh, I'm about to show you here. Um, so if I go to the layers, which are these two squares. Yeah. And if I click on N, it's right next to that box. Yeah. It's going to pull up a bunch of options. Oh, that's what I was looking for before. Oh, yeah. And so then there's this little blue sliding bar mm -hmm. at the top. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring it down to maybe like 65%. So this is a little bit different than editing the photo. Um, what's happening here is I'm actually, I'm making my photo more transparent. So it looks lighter because it has white behind it and it's just more transparent. So if I were to draw underneath this photo, you guys don't have to do this. Um, it would actually look darker if there's black underneath instead of white. Uh -huh. okay. But you you went too fast. You went far too fast. Oh, I'm just showing you. Um, you don't have to do this. Yeah, but uh, it's no help in showing us if if we don't know how to do it. Oh yeah, but this is just um. So instead of lightening the image like we were doing before, this is just making your image more transparent. Okay. So, so I just put red behind my image so you can see that. So you went to brush or where did you go to put brown, red behind it? Um, it's just a different layer underneath it. But you don't have to do this part. So what's the point no, of but making... how did you do it? Did you add another layer? 
Yeah, so I just added another layer and I put it underneath leave me alone. the chair. So I just clicked on the plus sign and then I dragged it underneath the chair. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry, my dog has to go out. Okay. What is the advantage of making the photo more transparent? Um, so the reason we were going to do that is so when we're tracing our photo, um, those dark areas aren't quite as dark and we can see our outlines a little bit better. So it's kind of a preference thing when I trace images. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so if I darken my image, you can see how it starts to cover up because it's just how light it is. I don't remember how you move the layer. And now did you get the opacity? Is that the thing that's on the left hand side as well? That's the M. Oh, okay, thank you. It's a little sliding bar. Can you tell us how you move the layer? I forgot that. Yeah, so to move a layer, I just hold down on it and then I can drag it around where I want to put it. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It didn't work with my finger, but it worked with my pen. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the, right now, this is on top. And if I go by, it's on bottom behind it. So we're just making our layer more transparent. Emma, I have a quick question. I, I'm guessing this doesn't mean anything, but my, my photo is on a layer called inserted image. Mm -hmm. And then there's a layer one that is black. A layer one is black. And then, yeah, yeah and the, like I said, there's another layer that says inserted image. I can hold it up. Oh. I can't see it. Ah, I, I, I don't think it matters. I think it's, it might, it's just the naming, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, yeah, if I could see it, I'd be... Yeah, let me send it across. Okay. Perfect. By the way, Leah said there's a, a brush that's fur. Is it actually called fur? Um, or is it the sable one? It is flowing hair, short hair, and fine hair. Under um, materials. It undermines... It's under materials, but I believe some people have it under something called touch-ups. Got it. Thank you. Where are we? It's really cool, Sandra. Yeah. yeah. Where are we now? Because I'm doing a limure <laughs> rather than a chair. Are we on oh. the pens? I see at least. Okay. So I told you you were going to love that. <laughs> basically, um, all that is, is it's just a blank layer. So it's not actually black. It's just there's nothing on it. Okay. Um, and, but, yeah. and it's okay that the other that the the photos on something that says inserted image that's fine. Yeah, that's just the title of it. I'm not sure why mine didn't. Usually, it, when it is inserted, okay. it comes in as inserted image. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, if you want to get rid of that layer, you can just delete it. And it shouldn't do anything. Okay. Um, and if you guys want um, to keep things all organized, we can rename our image and put it as photo. How did we rename it again? We click the so layer or? Um, we click on where the text is. Um, when you look at your little layer up here, it should have some text. Yeah, and, and then, then, oh, rename. Yeah, 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 okay. Yep, right at the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Emma, we're just using that photo uh, layer and no, nothing know. else, or are we going to have another layer finally? Yeah, so we're going to put on another layer next. So okay. I'm going to put on a plus sign, and it should pop up as layer two or layer three, something like that. Yeah. Um, and we can rename this layer for clarity. Um, I'm going to go click on the layer, rename, and I can call it outline. Is it gonna be on top of the chair or below the chair? I know so I, I'm hopeless now, but I don't get my my uh, keyboard coming up. Okay. Um. Here, once I out answer that in a second, we're gonna to want to keep it um, on top of this layer. Um. And then for the keyboard, does your like is your text little thing still blinking? No, 
It's not because I wrote with my pen, but now, okay. now, now it is. Okay, perfect. Yeah, sometimes um, the newer iPads, they'll it'll automatically do where you just write it. In yeah, they, they blink, but I don't get the keyboard. Um, so I think you can just write it in with your pen. Yeah, it doesn't read my writing. It it called it layer one when I wrote photo. Hold it, hold it on top of the of, of, of the layer on top of the name for a little bit. Yeah, but I did, and I wrote, and it it just wrote something else than I wrote. It doesn't read my handwriting. If you double click, it's gonna show the keyword. With your finger, twice. Okay. Top it twice. Yeah, I, and I, I get then I get the op option to cut, copy, replace, or share. Your, your keyboard didn't pop up. My mine just did. I just thank you. Mine that. I, I just learned that. That was awesome. You double yeah. double tap it with your before. finger. It did before, but it hasn't this time. It might help just to go out of your layers and go back in and try again. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I would just click out and then go back in to okay. layers and try renaming it again. How is yours coming, Abby? Or... That's not. Still trying to figure it out, but we're doing good so far. Okay, is it? Do now I, I got a new group instead. This is not working. I'm so sorry. It worked last time. It just doesn't let me do it. Okay. It made a new group? Yeah. New group, it says since that when I held down. Hmm. And that comes over layer. Now I have one that's called layer one with a writing one and the layer one with a one. And when I click on the name, like you said, I don't get an option anymore to rename it. Hmm. It's really weird. If Should I just kill this and and put in another layer? You can try deleting it because um, there yeah. shouldn't be anything on it yet. You could try. But I have, it is new group. I just unclick that then. The hey, mine also does the new groups and it really doesn't matter much. Yeah. Oh, it the doesn't. Are, yeah, it doesn't like matter. The groups are um, an organization thing. So it's meant for like the person drawing to understand like how their layers are organized, but they don't really affect how the layers work. So if it says group today, it should be okay. Only I don't get the option to rename it this time. This is so weird. Are you trying to do with the finger or with the, with the pen? I'm trying both and I'm holding it down and it just makes it a little bit larger. It should, when you tap it once, it should open a dialog that says change name or rename. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should, but I, it's not. I'm doing it. it and you got to click on rename first and it's going to yeah, select. I do. I, do. I, it it, it. I don't get the options on the left hand side that I did before. Oh, I see. It would help. Do you think you'd be able to send a picture of what your screen looks like? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, perfect. I think I am a tech idiot or my 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 iPad is wonky because it worked before. It worked before. Yeah, that is kind of weird. I don't know why it would stop working. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's something small. Um, if, if you end up not being able to change your layers names today, it yeah. should be okay. Fine. Um, yeah. when I'm just drawing by myself, I don't name any of my layers, but it's kind of handy when we're all doing it together to make sure. So, so is this layer going to be on top of the picture? Yep. Or on there? So it'll be on top of our picture. Okay. And I think what you have will be okay. I don't think it will affect your drawing at all. Looking at the photo. Okay. I, I work like this. That doesn't matter. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah. So let's see. Um, and then Abby, is your photo, is it uploaded or is it working? 
Uh, we're getting there. We're almost there. <laughs> okay. Is it like an issue? Like, is it not going to the iPad or is it something in Procreate? Um, I had the photo like on my phone, but we're trying to get the WhatsApp to work on my iPad. So. Oh, okay. So I believe WhatsApp, it doesn't work on iPad, right? Is that correct, Leah? Yeah. Um, but. Yes, that's correct. correct. It doesn't work on the iPad. The, the WhatsApp thread is only to share work. So it'll just stay on a cell phone. And I'm sorry, Abby, because to have to deal with all this is you're coming in because you've got the wrong link. You know what I, anyway, I get it. It's completely chaotic. So don't worry. <laughs> just, that's why I'm like, please ask as you're going because we can get you set up and, and keep going. Yep. Is the photo on your, do you have an iPhone? Uh, what might be the fastest way is if you can airdrop the photo from your phone to your iPad. Uh, that's what I usually do if I want to get a photo over fast. Okay. Um, um, the same thing happened to me, and I have an Android, so I couldn't even airdrop. <laughs> well, like, no. um, so your suggestion, maybe I, I was thinking about just getting Google Photos on my iPad and then going mm -hmm. from there. Does that sound good? Yeah. I think as long as it can get over, I don't know Android super well. I, I, I do have an Android. You just have to have WhatsApp web, download the photo from the WhatsApp web, and then save it as a photo. No, save it as a, as a, as a file. Okay, sounds good. Just a photo, okay? Thank you. Perfect. I'm glad you know, because I was like, oh no, <laughs> I've never used it. Oh, I don't have an iPhone either, don't worry. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so um are you do you guys all have that outline layer and um we want to make sure that before we start drawing that we're selected onto the outline layer um so if we're drawing on our photo we're going to have some issues so we want to make sure that the outline is our one that's selected so i just might double check that real quick and then i'm going to go to my pencil tool and i really like to use my drawing tools uh, I think last time we used that Oberon. We can do a different pen today and try something else out. Maybe let's try the Eagle Hawk one just for fun. You guys can see if you like that one more. It's right above it. What is the one? It's called Eagle Hawk. It's under drawing. Oh, yeah. Did you guys find that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then did you get that photo, Abby? Perfect. Did, have you uploaded it to Procreate or do you know how to do that? Yeah, I got it, so. Perfect, okay, sweet. Um, so now we're gonna leave our brushes and I'm gonna go to my colors, which is the little dot in the corner. Aren't we gonna do this, those sliders first? How many percent we're we can. gonna have? Um, you could change the color and then change the sliders, or you could do it. Yeah, slider. but I mean, the, we did the thickness of the pen and the, how transparent it would be before we did the color, right? Yeah, you can do it before, or you could do the color first. Um, oh, you okay. can change your pen at any time. So I, it depends. I don't know how I'm working, but how, how much opacity should we have? Um, I was going to put mine at about 100. Um, and because we're outlining, we probably want the pen on a smaller size. So like so, two? Yeah, I have this at four, and I like where it's at four. OK. Did you guys get that, all changing the pen size? Yes. OK. Sorry, I missed, I missed it. Oh, no, you're good. So yeah, the, the pen hog, size yeah. is at about 4%, and the opacity is at 100. Got it. I have the color. Yeah. Is it black? Yep. And I'm going to go to the colors, which is in this upper corner. Select black. Um, if black doesn't pop up as an immediate option, um, and if you have something more like this, you can slide your inner circle down to black. Um, I'll be using the classic colors, 
which is the second one on the bottom. And it's gonna look like this. Do you guys all have the classic colors? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm just gonna drag my circle on the inside down to like a black corner to get that. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get the colors from the image, the palette from image? Oh, um, still I haven't done last that. time colors. I mean, it's sh still showing me that cat colors, I think. Mm -hmm. um, this is from the cat colors too, as well. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I haven't imported the image colors. Okay. Okay. But we're not at colors yet, right? We're at the drawing. Not yet. Yeah, yeah we're, we're just at an outlining phase now. Okay. So right now, I just want you guys to outline only the chair. So I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to start outlining my chair. Oh, that. oh, I'm back in, I'm back in the place where it doesn't show. It's not showing. No, opacity 100%, right? Yep. And 4% that. It does not. Is, are you on the right layer? Yeah, I think so. I am on layer, yeah, I'm at the newest layer. Mm -hmm. And I'm at Eagle Hawk, 4%, mm -hmm. and 100% opaque, and the color black. Mm -hmm. I'll see yes. if it works with my pen, with my finger. No. No, nothing. And your pen tool is selected. Is it lit up blue? Yeah, absolutely. And, and my pen, I have my pencil is charged. Is it connected to Bluetooth? Mm. Oh, where did we check that again? Where did we check that? That under. It's going to be under settings. So outside of Procreate, you go to settings on your iPhone. And that, that was what was la wrong last time, I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, general Bluetooth on. Yeah, it's on. Hmm. And it says Apple that pencil is connected. Hmm. This is. Oh, it was the one with unscrewing and screwing on the top too, right? Yep, try screwing the top, make sure it's tightened. It's very tight, it's so tight I can't unscrew it. Okay. And nothing happens. Hmm. Um, I feel like if it's not with the pencil, maybe it is the layers. Uh, when you go to your layers, is it on the one that's right above your image? Yes. Hmm. Yes. It is. The uh, opacity is at 100%. Yep. And the pencil tool selected. Yes. Black. Yeah, black. I might honestly try exiting in and out of the app again. Like I would um, close it completely and open it again. The currently selected layer is hidden. Oh, okay. So that means um, you're on a different layer. So would you mind opening up your layer tab? Yeah. Uh, can you hold that up real quick so I can see where you're at? It's looking the same as it's been all along. Okay, so is the box unchecked? Uh, shit, yes, it was. Ah, there we go. So make sure that that box is checked. Oh, did um, shit, how um, <laughs> silly. Yeah, if your box is hidden, um, it won't let you draw on that layer. It still doesn't let me draw though. It still it doesn't. It's I just watch you. I just watch you, but it does not work. It does not work. It says layer four and it's clicked. I'm going to unclick the. Oh. oh, I unclicked the new group and then it unclicked. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. But everything layer, every layer is on. So is the group on? Yeah. And it's still not working? Nope. Hmm. It is and um, it's ridiculous. That's weird because is it still giving you the image hidden alert when you're trying to draw? No. This is insane. So much for this. And I, the hidden thing was only once because I unchecked the group mm -hmm. when I tried. But no, it doesn't let me draw. It, it is un insane. That is very weird. Yeah. Um, did you try exiting out all the way and going back in again? I'll do that next. Yeah, I was in settings, so of course. Try um like swiping and like when you're at this stage, yeah, and swiping up and having it completely close. Uh, I, so you do something like this. We just swipe up. Okay. It doesn't. I. It doesn't happen. Yeah. I'm going out of the thing. Mm -hmm. Shall I restart my frigging thing again? Uh, I I'm agree. Doing, it's I'm the only doing. thing I can think of that. Yeah, I think it sounds like the solution. Try it and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, this is so silly because I mean, I'm do I'm following the instructions and it worked before. Yeah. Maybe I have a the iPad. Everybody else, Trey. Emma, one question, please. Yeah. When you want to get complete black, do you go to mm -hmm. the circle? Because sometimes in the palette it looks black, but it's not a proper black. How do you get oh. real black? You go to the... So if I go to classics, if you go to where? Classic on the color. Um, yes, yes. I have these three dials, right? Mm -hmm. As long as those three dials, all three of them are all the way to the left, it should give me a perfect black. Thank you very much. Like, hmm? Okay, I restarted and it still doesn't work. Um, so Wait, I, mean, I can't see. Do you think you could take a picture and send it through of your layers and your screen? Yeah, of course. I didn't. I do that. Um, the last one I have is from about fifteen minutes ago. I it think it was the your... same. Looks exactly the same, but I can do it again. Okay. I'm just checking, is everybody else in kind of the tracing stage right now? Perfect. Any, yes. yes. Everybody else is doing okay. If you're not doing okay, give us a, I don't know, give a shout. <laughs> We're well, a shouter. I, We're shouting I've, right here. <laughs> I've traced the chair. Are we tracing more than the chair? Uh, Emma, do you want them to use, let's not use the perspective tool today. We'll do that another okay. day. Uh, yeah, get okay. the lines that are kind of of the wall and the window, right? Mm -hmm. Ready. Those lines of the wall and the window. We were going to show you a perspective tool today, but we'll do it a different day. Yeah, I think we might run out of time. Yeah, it's, it's kind of our fault because we put in a photo. We should have fixed that photo before we put it in. I just thought we'd be able to fix it in Photoshop. So. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to start over and just take a new one. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at your screen. I don't know. All of your layers are selected. You are on the right one. It's very weird to me. It's very weird to me too, I can yeah. assure you. Okay. I'm starting all over and see if that helps. Okay. Do you feel like you 
You remember how to do it before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember how to do it. Perfect. So, uh, there. Emma, will you remind me what pen um, brush did you use? I am, if you go under drawing, and then it's under Eagle Hawk. Perfect. Yeah. If you guys want to get perfectly straight lines for these uh, areas on your windows and the walls, what you can do is you can kind of freehand it. And then if you- Oh, it works! Yay! It works. Oh, that's really fun. <laughs> okay. So I started all over. Mm -hmm. it's, and I wonder if it's something like really small in the settings. That would take up really long time to go hunt down. Yeah, no, but this was a good, good way of doing it. Good. If everything else fails, mm -hmm. let's start over. Is it working for you guys to do this little perfect line setting? Yes. Perfect. Um, no, I did it last week, um, but I can't get it to work. You draw the line and then you just hold on the line. Hold. Yeah, so I draw and then I just kind of hold. I have to hold for quite a long time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I got it. Cool. This is another example with where like <laughs> your perspective is done for you and <laughs> I'm out of a job, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's fine. You're not going to get out of a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know this is just my joking, right? Like, my oh my God, like, it takes many times to do this, and all this blah, blah, blah. And then here with the computer, you just hold and drag it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we ask paint by numbers. Yep. Yay. So now what we can do is mm -hmm. I go back to my layers. And we no, a little bit behind. But okay. I, I, I think I, I can. Uh... Okay. All I've done here is I'm just hiding my photo. So all I have now is my outline. Did that work for you guys? Sorry, can you repeat uh, hang on, one sec. Yes. Yeah, so all it is is if I go to layers, I'll have my outline in my photo. And then there's a check mark on the right side of both of those. And I just want to uncheck my photo to hide it. Uncheck the photo, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're now going to add our reference photo. So we did this last week. I think it'll be a good review of how to add one. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to exit out of my layers, just tapped outside. Okay. Um, and then if I go back up to wrench, yeah. if I go to canvas. Okay. And if I click on reference and I turn it on, yeah. it's going to look like this. Yeah. All right. And then I go to image. Mm -hmm. Then I click import image. Okay. I select my photo. And there it is. That's fine. That's fine. And then remove it. Did that work for you guys? Kind yes. of. Perfect. And then once again, we can change the size of this yeah. by click on this bottom corner. I can change its dimensions. Okay. And if I select this gray line at the top, yeah, see it. It. and I like to put mine in the upper corner. Okay. Now we want to make one more layer because um, we want to have a separate layer for our colors and a separate layer for our outlines. So I'm going to go back to these two little squares. Then I'm going to click on the plus sign. Yep. And it's going to bring up a new layer. Yep. So 
then if I click on that layer, it's going to give me all of these options here. And I'm going to click the top one, say rename. And if you don't I get that it, now, I don't still don't get it. I still don't get that option. Are if you click on your layer? Yeah. And I'm holding my pen down on lay on the text. Mm -hmm. Is it still letting you edit the text? No. It does not. Nothing happens. We're back in the same. We're back in the same. Nothing happens. It's it's a little finicky. If you ever touch accidentally outside of it, you'll lose it. But I'm not. I'm touching inside. Oh, I'm... like if you touch anything outside after you're in that area, you'll lose that option. Yeah, but I, the option doesn't come up when I press, press layer three. I just let it be layer three. Who cares? Okay. Does it work if you press the layer twice? Yes. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's, huh. For me, it works usually if I do it once, but for some reason it's doing it twice. What do we call it? Um, let's call this one, I like to call it color blocking. Okay. Although I don't have um, my keyboard. And I believe that's where you touch twice and it works, right? Is that what you, is working for you guys? Now when I touch, touch twice, it comes, replace, look up, share, cut. Hmm. Oh, I give up. I think you need private lessons, Diana. Yeah, I, I, this, this, but I'm following the instructions and I've done it before. So it's, it's really weird. Do you think it'll work to have it under a different name for now? Uh, it doesn't matter. I have it as layer three, so that's okay. Cool. That's what it is. Okay. So now we're at the point where we're gonna want to start blocking in some of our big colors. But before we do that, we want to make sure that we're on the right layer. So I just want to double check when I go to layers that the color blocking. Our layer three is looking up blue. Should we should we get rid of all the other layers? Um, I wouldn't. I would wait on that. No, but I mean, I don't mean get rid, but uncheck them. Oh no, we want to check them. Um, because if we uncheck the outline, it's just going to hide it from us, and we want to see oh, the yeah, outline. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can uncheck your photo. Yeah, I've done that. Okay, perfect. So now that color blocking is selected, I can click out and we can start sampling some colors. So once again, to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to focus on this flat part of my chair for now. So I can take my finger and hold down on the reference photo and it's going to pull up that color selecting tool. Is that working for you guys? Yeah. Perfect. So I'm just going to select this kind of peachy color. Which which color are you trying to, to find, uh, Emma? I took this color from right in here. It's kind of like a peachy. Alrighty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for color blocking, I like to work with a pretty big brush. So I'm going to change this. <coughs> Let me see if I can find a size. <coughs> I like that size. So this is at... same brush, the eagle hawk. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, well, I'm using the same brush, and it's at forty-two percent right now. <laughs> Sorry. How are you? Express you. And it should kind of look something like this. It's very text textural. Uh, what were your brush um, measurements? Am I missed it? Sorry. Oh, you're good. It's um forty-two percent, but anywhere in that range will probably be fine. Okay. But we're just going to do the caution, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I just filled in the top cushion. And after I've laid down that, I'm looking at my photo and we have some really bright white areas on that top of the cushion. And I wanna make sure I include that. So I'm gonna sample those bright areas where I just hold down and then I drag it over top of that color. And it looks like to be kind of like a little curved triangle right there. And then the edge of the seat is also kind of lit up there. And this brush, it's automatic setting is kind of transparent, even though it's at full opacity. Yeah. So you might notice, I like to use that because yeah. it blends nice. Um, but if you go over the color. On your first layer, I think that's a nice way to think about it. That's like painting. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> Just saying, that's like painting. <laughs> so if you want to go over top um, of it a few times, if you want it darker, you can do that. And if it's not holding up as like opaque as you want it. Oh, shit. So now I can sample some of the dark colors on this bottom half of the cushion. And we can put these in there. And I like to lay down like a big block of color as like, this is my base. And then I'll go over top of it again with um, like the nuances of that area. You mean the lighter colors? You go on top of the lighter areas, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I've put down that dark brown. And now I want to select some of the lighter colors. And so I'm taking, if I zoom in real close to this reference photo, there's a little triangle in the chair. Then directly below it, you get these like nice little pinks. So I'm just holding down and getting that pink. So in painterly terms, those are dark midtones, right? Mm -hmm. They're in the shadow. They're not as dark as the darkest part of the shadow. Exactly. Probably because that top part is popping out. So that's what she's talking about. Those are the dark midtones that she's adding. And look how nice they look laid over dark, just like painting. I'm just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of starts to like feel like okay I know what I'm doing <laughs> and the nice part about this brush is um if I push harder it's gonna be like more of that light but if there's areas where it's um I want it to look a little bit darker if I push lighter I'll show you so if I push really hard it's gonna look like this and if I push lightly it's gonna look like this which is kind of like the magic of having an Apple Pencil. Right. So get rid of those real quick. And right now we're basically just doing color by numbers. So yeah. let's do, yeah, so let's do this section of the chair right here, that right arm. I'm going to sample that darker color on the face of um, that arm and lay that down here. And then on this section, we have this nice pink shape. And I'm gonna fill that in. And I'm mostly just worrying right now about filling in like the, not worrying necessarily about what it is, but just what the shape is. I and mean, this is a nice photo because these plane changes are really dramatic. Like we have this really dark face and then this really light one. Yeah. Mia likes the, just looking at the shapes, not looking up what we're doing. Yeah, our brains like to get in the way a bit. How are those working for you guys? Yeah. Is this still the same brush that you've all? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just catching up with you. 
for this surface here of the chair, this back section has a nice gradient. So to do that, I'm gonna, I like to start with my dark colors and put my lights on top. So I'm gonna take this almost black, dark red in the corner of the chair, right about in here. And I'm actually gonna cover the whole face of the chair. With that really dark tone. And because this brush is a little bit transparent, I'm going to have these areas where it's lighter and these areas where it's darker. So if I want to get like that really dark brown, I can go over it again over here to make it darker. And then I'm going to sample my lighter tones in the upper left of that section of the chair. It's nice pinks right out in here. And then I can push pretty hard at the front or when I first start. And then I'm gradually lifting up my pencil and making it lighter. So I push and then slowly let up as I go down. Is that working for you guys? Are you able to get some creations? Yeah, it's working, it's cool. Hey, perfect. One of the tricks that I like to do if I'm working in here and I think, oh, well, I want it to be a little bit smoother. I feel like it's too dramatic right now. I can sample a color on my drawing and I can sample one of these like darker medium tones and that will become my new brush. And I can kind of use that color in between my light and my dark to make the change a little bit less dramatic. So I'm just sampling color and laying it on. So Emma, if I have a color already down and then I, I put like a slightly different shade of brown on top of it, am I mixing those two cut shades or am I, or is it just going over the other one? Um, so it, every brush acts a little bit differently, so it's going to okay. depend the brush you're using. Okay. I think with this one, there is a little bit of blending going on, okay. but it's mostly just transparency Okay, that blending's coming from. Yeah, because I the initial brown I got, it's just an a icky color brown, and it, it mm -hmm. doesn't, you know, I, I took it right from the photo, but it's just, I don't know. It doesn't really look to me like the photo and it's just kind of yucky. So I'm trying to go over it. Yeah. Every brush kind of acts differently, which is kind of nice. Um, if you guys find an artist that you really like on Procreate, he like works with the same app, some artists will like sell their brush sets where they've designed their own and they'll like sell the types of brushes they use. Um, I haven't bought a set before. I usually download free ones, but um, that's definitely if you like want to play around. Can do and Emma, where do you find free ones? Oh yeah, here, I'll show you guys. While you guys are color blocking, I'll show you guys. So um, I put it in the other video, but I think it's good to go over. So. Um, I actually, I go out of Procreate, and then I'm going to make here, and then I open up Safari, mm -hmm. uh, it's a search engine, and I'm going to go to the Procreate website, right here. All right. They have a very pretty website, <laughs> um, and then I'm just going to scroll all the way to the bottom, and under the discussions, mm -hmm. There's going to be a tab that says resources. 
right? And it'll bring you to this page. So all of these are people who use Procreate, like Procreate, they're all artists. Um, and they like make brushes, some of them like make tutorials, some make textures. Um, and they just put them on here for people to download for free. Um, How do you know you're not getting a virus instead? It def you're definitely taking a risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I think it, I imagine that it's a little bit like, from I don't know. Police. Sure. I think it might be a little bit safer getting it from the Procreate website than like a random search. But the Procreate website, are there extra brushes compared to what you get in the app? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these are all people who use the app. Um, but you say it might be better to get it from the, web, from the Procreate website, but without getting it from these third party strangers, is there another place where you can actually get other brushes not, from Procreate? Not that I have discovered. Okay. Yeah. Um, but some artists, like, they do sell packs. It's like it's a trusted artist that you know. Um, and there are ways to make and design your own brushes. Um, but I don't know how to do that super well yet. And another question, please. You know how you showed me to do how to get the, the black? How do you get a white? Oh, yeah. So if you go back to your colors, uh -huh. um, if I bring the bottom one all the way to the top right and the middle one all the way to the left right it's going to bring me to a perfect white and it's and the top one work. doesn't matter where it is mm -hmm. great right, thank you upper one mm -hmm. thank you yeah e emma mm -hmm. um can you please tell me how did you blend it um like to from dark to light i'm not quite able to do it well yeah, here, I'll show you. Can you see this okay? Yeah. Perfect, okay. So I'm just gonna do like a little sample here. Um, I took my darkest color yeah. and put it on one side. And then what you can do with Procreate is if I push really hard and mm -hmm. I gradually let up, yeah. it's give me a little bit of a gradation. Okay. And this brush is transparent. So the more times I go over it, the darker it's also gonna be. Mm. Um, and then I took my lightest tone okay. on the other side. Yeah. And I can put that right here. Okay. Kind of fade into it. Oh, I don't like that. I'm gradually letting up. That's like blending. So yeah. does it help to blend with transparent layers? Mm hmm Okay. That's I where like the this. blending happens. That's good. Mm -hmm. And if this isn't like smooth enough for you, you can also sample. So I just hold down my screen and get my sampler out. If I sample this kind of color right in the middle, mm -hmm. I can even come in with that medium tone and kind of blend it even more. Yeah. Okay. Does that work for you? Yes. Thanks. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like to use transparent brushes when I blend. So this is not the Eagle Hawk brush anymore? Um, this is the Eagle Hawk brush. I was, I was erasing with a different brush there, so it looks oh. kind of different. But um, all of the painting right now is done with the Eagle Hawk. Um, okay. And we haven't quite used an eraser yet. But when we do, we can also change that later on. Do you guys want to send me where you guys are at? Yeah, this is a good place to kind of stop for a bit and see what people, just check what people are doing. So you can either take a picture from your phone and send it over the thread, or if you want to let Emma know. It's a little hard to see holding up, so mm -hmm. better to send it across the thread if you can. Um, And there's a little light edge there, Emma. 
around the edge the because of the window. Yeah. Listen to me. I'm not like now trying to boss <laughs> you around. Sorry, boss. You're the boss. You're the boss. <laughs> oh, Diana, that looks good. Not exactly, but yeah. Um, your brush is transparent, so like you are seeing the white underneath. Um, if that well, actually, yeah, you you said that the transparency should be at opacity should be at a hundred percent. Yeah. So if you do want it darker in places, you can go over it again. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I get that. Nice. He says, "Ooh, yes, very nice." Oh, really nice, Abby. That came out. Look, that came out looking well. Yeah. Nice, Lisa. Oh, Diana, I like the brights. You procreate just like you paint. <laughs> <laughs> Leah, I think this might this might bother you a bit, but something uh -oh. that we can do right now. <laughs> I can take it. Hit me with your best shot. Okay. Kid. Do it. <laughs> is if you guys want, we can try adding a color underneath our chair to see if we like how it affects it. So, yeah, actually, I did that. I did. so you know, when you paint with like a traditional medium, if you're gonna do like um, an underpainting, you have to do the underpainting first. If we want, we can do our overpainting and then add an underpainting after. So we can do that, you guys want to. So I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to add a new layer. I can rename it. And I'm just why do we need it. why do we need a new layer for that? I'll show you here in a second. I promise it will make sense. Okay. Um, I just called it underpainting. And then what I can do is I can drag my underpainting layer. Oh, still text. There we go. You can just hold it and I'm going to put it underneath my outline. Which was layer two, I guess. As I couldn't change the names of mine. This is where you need to have the renamed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if I'm trying to figure out which layer it is, I'll just hide it and see which layer is hidden. I'm like, oh, okay. That's my outline. So after I have my underpainting layer underneath my outline, I can now click on a fun color. I can play around and I can just fill it underneath. Okay. So you basically, are, you're doing an underpainting after you've done your overpainting. Oh, okay. And this is kind of fun because you can now be like, oh, what would it look like if it were like lime green? Ew. Like, <laughs> Another thing you guys can do is if I just want to cover this whole screen with that one color, I can go up here right now with this green, hold down. There we go, I have my green. I'm just gonna grab it and pull it over. And now I have this dot moving around my screen, right? And if I just drop it, it'll fill in that background. Whew. Wow. So oh, you can cool. Just, like, yeah. You can just with like a bunch of different colors and play around. Look at mine, bright purple. Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. It looks like pop art. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I kind of like the green. I might keep my green because they're complementary colors. So now I can go back to drawing on my chair and I just want to make sure before I start drawing um, that I'm on the right layer. So I want to keep that under painting layer in my color blocking layers stuff separate. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm back on color blocking before I start painting again. I have done things where I've done like big sections of a drawing and then realized that I put it on the wrong layer. So when I go to like get rid of my outline, I can't get the 
it's like okay, it's got important information on that layer. Can you show me your layers really quick, please? Yep. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Now add that highlight here, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> My brush is tiny bit smaller. This is better to do with the finger, it goes quicker. Um, sorry, Emma, can you show me the layers again? Underpainting was under what? The under under outline. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we go back to layer three or the mm -hmm. previous layer and continue painting, mm -hmm. uh, even if the last layer is checked, we can mm -hmm. paint over it to make sort of mix it, right? Yep, yep. So the check mark, um, it's only there to tell you if your layer is hidden or not. Okay. Um, it doesn't tell you which one you're drawing on or anything like that. Which layer are we working on right now? Um, the color blocking layer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, like, how is your uh, brush so uh, giving you clean strokes? My brush is smudging a lot, like while I'm doing these white lines. Oh, because I, ice, I right? made. Mm -hmm. Um, I made the size of my brush a little bit smaller to get these finer lines. Okay. Yeah. The secret trick, mm -hmm. <laughs> which shouldn't be secret, but becomes secret. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. But you're still in like transparent mm -hmm. layers, right, Emma? Mm -hmm. So all that's all. There should be like a little blending that happens. Mm -hmm. All right. I see. And it. the brush it's actually has like. A pretty textural, like it doesn't really make. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Mm -hmm. I see it. Interesting. Hmm. Ooh. Um, I have another question, and maybe this has already been asked. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, so if people are sampling colors, mm -hmm. and the color doesn't show up the way you want it to on your iPad, can you fix that color once you lay it down? Can you adjust yeah. it? So let's say like I'm working on this couch cushion right here. Yeah. And I've sampled this color and it, it's a light tone, but I feel like I want it brighter or yeah. maybe I want it darker. Yeah. So I have this um, selected and I'm going to go to my colors here. Right. For some reason it's on palettes. I'm going to change mine so that it's on classic. Right. So that's what and you should do. I think I've mentioned why I like classic a lot, um, because if you know color theory, you can mix whatever you want. You can have really good color skills. Um, okay. Your first one, dial, the top one is going to be um, your hue or your like temperature of color. So this will change your brush, whatever brush you're using, it'll adjust it. Yeah, it doesn't change your brush, but changes the color on it changes brush. the color on the brush. Mm -hmm. All right, so you guys, I'm noticing that for some of you, I can see the colors are a little bit duller as they're coming over. If you wanna brighten them, this might be the way to mm -hmm. do it, right? Just because of the sampling being the way it is. I, I mean, you may be just fine with it, but if you wanna adjust your colors, you shouldn't feel stuck with the sample colors. You should yeah. feel like you, you can change it. So, all right, go ahead. So if I want this one to feel more like it's like glowing and it's in the sunlight, Maybe I want it a little bit warmer than the color they gave me. So I'm going to bring it more to this side. So the left is warmth and the right is coolness. So if I want it warmer, I'm going to bring it over a little bit more to the left. And say I want it a little bit brighter um, toned. So when things become um, like, when they have a lot of light on them and they look kind of like blurry, you're losing all this detail and you're losing saturation. So if I wanted a brighter white, I'm gonna move down my saturation. So this is on my second dial. 
the second dial saturation. So it's going to be how gray your color is, basically. And I want to lean it more to the gray side. And then the last dial is your brightness and darkness. And I want to bring it up really bright. So now if I exit out, I'm going to get it's a very subtle change because I used a white. <laughs> but you see here, there's a very subtle, this color is brighter than this color. This is more of like a peachy tone. This is a little bit closer to like your stark white. Do you see how that subtle difference there? And you can make more drastic changes. Like if I wanted it to be darker, I'd bring this slide down, change that over there. And then if I lay it down, and have something entirely different. So you can kind of start to tweak them. Ooh, wow, Mariana, that's so nice. Thank you. I think I, I, I'm finally getting something that I catch up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can tell you're really good at like picking out um, like she the shapes that like the hidden She's green. good at picking out colors. That's absolutely yeah. true. Um, Mariana, did you adjust any of your colors as you laid them out? I didn't. I uh, what I did was to blur the lines. Nice. So you did that blur brushwork. Super. Mm -hmm. I also really like how there's like hidden greens in your shadows. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of your mid tones are great. I like that. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but Tashween said that we're drawing the blues clues red chair. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody saw Blue's Clues? For those of us who are my age and older, you may not remember Blue's Clues, but like. <laughs> oh, I thought that I was too old. Like, <laughs> But you have nieces, you have baby nieces. No, I'm literally talking about when I was a kid and watched Blue's Clues, and I always yeah. wanted <laughs> <laughs> My sister was obsessed with Blue's Clues. Um, oh, blue's Clues are supposed to be the best way to work with kids. Really? Kids. Yes. Um, Malcolm Gladwell did a really fascinating book about this. He looked at the difference between Sesame Street and Blue's Clues. Sesame That's Street is kind of more geared towards adults. Uh, but Blue's Clues is kind of moronic, right? Like it's a little bit like you're repeating everything. A whole. And he said it. Blue's Clues is absolutely educationally designed mm -hmm. to appeal to, to little kids. It's my parents. A lot of repetition. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's looking really good. These are looking um, so fun. What book was that? I remember reading this actually. It was like the tipping point. Yeah, the tipping point. Yep. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yep, yep the tipping point. It was what the tipping point. So Remember how he talked about that? About, I mean, I love Sesame Street myself, and I used to love it that the adults would sit with me and laugh at it. <laughs> totally different things. <laughs> but they said uh, Sesame Street was a little too fast. And so it's the things that adults find kind of like tedious mm -hmm. that are what little kids need in terms of, you know, you just need a lot. Of, and actually, truthfully, we all need it too, right? When we're trying to learn something new, we need rep repetition over and mm -hmm. over and over again as you're learning something new. Um, so yeah, Blue's Clues was it. It was like the sort of penultimate kids show designed with kids psychology and development mm -hmm. in mind. So was yeah. Barney and so was Teletubbies, even though that was creepy. Uh, <laughs> Teletubbies. Right? Creepy and weird to us. Yeah, right? <laughs> Fantastic, the little kids. <laughs> My, um... I also remember the Backyardigans. Do you remember the Backyardigans? Back a little vaguely. The backyard backyardigans are like about singing all the time, uh, <laughs> singing and dancing. <laughs> what I remember is um, Zoom, and not this Zoom, but the original Zoom show, the electric company, and um, what was the one with Henrietta the Hippo? What was the one with Henrietta the Hippo? It was in a little magic land in the backyard. <laughs> I can't remember. I'll mm. look it up. Hold on. When I have I to on Island. I don't know if that was in the backyard. When uh, when my sister and I were little, she absolutely loved. Do a zoo review. That's it. 
<laughs> Those are probably way too, too, uh, too old for you guys. I remember the Zoom theme song was so good. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, 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 and a zoom. Three, five, oh, oh, two, one. Oh, two, one, three, four. That was like the mailing address. <laughs> they sang it. Yeah, I can remember that. I can't remember what I did for breakfast this morning. This morning, I can definitely remember that. I think that's an Alzheimer's sign. We, we had something called four ants are more than three elephants. Oh, I love it. And it would, uh, it would uh, uh, teach kids to count and to learn the letters. And four ants is this is in Sweden. Yeah, four ants are more than uh, three yeah. elephants. <laughs> It was super popular. By the way, Emma, do you know the, the trick with the pen where you tap it twice and it switches to the eraser? Yeah. That's amazing. I just learned that. <laughs> it's pretty fun. You tap it twice and what? I'll, I'll let them explain it. <laughs> yeah. So um, on the newer pencils, the ones that have like a little flat side on them. Right. If while you're drawing, if you tap that flat side twice, like that, right. it switches to an eraser. Oh, so oh wow. Again, that really explains changed. something because suddenly I was erasing when I was drawing. Yeah. I must <laughs> have done that. I like that feature, but that sometimes might be while you weren't drawing. Drawing. yeah. Hmm? It happened while I was drawing, yeah. Yeah, sometimes that happens to me too, and I always just do the undo real quick. But yeah, it's kind of fast. Like it's a little handy if you're zooming around. And I think it works with like all like a bunch of different drawing applications. Like it's not just Procreate that you can do it with. So if you have other writing and drawing stuff on the iPad, it should work on those too. This is starting to look really lovely. I wanted you guys to work on something kind of comfy and cozy. Mm -hmm. um, it's been raining here, so this actually feels kind of perfect. Like us too. Cozy. Rainy, sunny, rainy, sunny. Mm -hmm. Rainy, sunny. But it would be fun, fun to paint it rather. Oops. You can paint it uh, at eleven thirty, Diana. Yeah, now I have something else I need to finish first. <laughs> yes, but it would be a good subject. I agree. Yeah. And what I think is interesting is this process can give you kind of ideas on how you might want to do it, how you might want to play on it, play with it. You know, it's a it's a fun way to figure that out. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit of time. I want to show you guys one more trick that you can do um, that might help um, color in things faster. Um, and also I like to use it when I do a painting like this with a really soft brush, I like to come in at the end and do this to add like areas of hard line work. So I'll show this to you real quick. So I'm gonna do it on this wall right here. So if I go to this little S tool, in between my wand and my arrow. Yeah. This is a selection tool. So I wanna click on it. I'm gonna click on freehand. And so I'm gonna zoom in here. If I click once, it's gonna bring up this little gray dot. Do you guys see that? Um, and this gray dot is kind of like the start of our selection chain. So I can select whatever I want. I can trace it. It's gonna do these little marching ants. And then when I wanna close my selection, I'll click on that dot. So I have my dot here and I wanna turn off, right now mine has color fill, but I wanna turn that off. So if yours has color fill, make sure that's off. It's right down here. So it's no longer here. 
I, I didn't follow. So we are in the middle on freehand. Yep, so I freehand and I put just one single gray dot down. Uh, and that's the copy and paste or? Um, nope, so all I did is I just touched my screen at yeah. this little corner here. Okay. And if I touch my screen right where that wall touches my chair, it's gonna automatically do a perfect straight line connecting those two dots. Oh, okay, I don't want that. I don't like straight lines. If you'd rather freehand, you can do that. So yep. when I go around the chair now, I'm going to freehand trace my chair. So you're kind of using this selection tool like you'd use a normal pencil, um, like any other pencils where I can just outline and trace. And I'm just tracing the outside of my chair. Is that working for you guys? Yeah, I don't know what I've done. I've got some weird. So send it over, Lisa. My okay, send it over so we can take a look. It's easy to overdo, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's as like anything at what we're learning about the Apple tools and is that it's it's sensitive, mm -hmm. right? So you can't just like you can't overwork a brush. You can't really overwork. Oh, I see. So that little dotted line is your um, is your outline, Emma. Yep, that is my outline. So why does it look like that? Did you put it behind something and that's how it looks? Uh, no. So um, when you're using a selection tool, uh, it's just the iPad's way of saying you're using a selection tool and not a pen. Oh, yeah. So Lisa, it looks like you did use it. It just looks like you, um, you've you already selected everything. So when you close a selection, everything inside that selection is going to get those little lines on through it. Okay. Yeah, that's clearly what I've done. There's little yeah. lines everywhere. So what I would do is I just undo. So I just two clicks on your screen. Okay. Did it work where it's kind of going back a few steps? Uh, yeah. Perfect. Yes. Is it bringing you back to that yes. line? Yes. It, yeah. Well, I, I went and all the way back and I did undo selection. Okay. Perfect. Um, so maybe what I'll do here is I'll close this real quick. So when you have a selection closed, this is in the way. My reference photo, go away. Okay. When I close a selection, it's gonna make everything outside of that selection gray, like these little gray lines. Can you see those? Yeah. They're really subtle. Yeah. But then if I switch to my brush tool, do you see how it only lets me fill in what I've selected? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, okay, I get it. And that's kind of why it's empty. So all I'm doing is I'm just like tracing the area now with my selection tool so I can fill it in with my brush later. So I'm just gonna, maybe I can show you here too. I can just like select a circle, select another circle, circle. And then when I go to fill it in, I'm only able to fill in those areas I've outlined. Okay. So okay. all I'm doing is I'm just outlining this wall here. So I can go in and I can add in that um, color. Okay. And the only thing that the selection tool does differently then your normal pen is, it won't like every line has to attach to each other, right? Um, it won't let you leave like a gap in your line. So it automatically connects all of like, every time you lift up the pen and you put it back down, it's gonna connect it with a straight line. Does that make sense? Yeah. But it's so funny what you said, Leah, because I can feel how I'm totally as not 
doing this like an illustrator. <laughs> no, you're definitely doing it like a painter. That's yes. how it works. That's how it works. And that's the idea, right? We don't want you all working the same. We want you to kind of figure out how to use this tool in the way that will be best for you. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's a tool, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're hoping, so we will have four more Procreate classes. Abby, you get to take the next one, another one free. So I'll send you the details, right? Because of the trouble. It was, all I'm going to say is it was one checked box that sent you the wrong, that created a whole bunch of things and sent you the wrong link. So <laughs> my bad, but uh, uh, I'll make sure we get the details right here. Um, and uh, we're going to try and keep the drawing simple. At some point, we would like to try a freehand draw. So maybe on the last class, the last class will be on June 26th. Mm -hmm. um, this video will be ready. I don't think we're going to need to do a second video. I think we don't need to add anything on. I think we've got enough. Can you finish? Emma, mm -hmm. uh, where did you end the selection? I mean, I saw how you started it. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, so to end a selection, so if I have my chair outline, I'll do it really roughly here. So mm -hmm. how, yeah. And the next question is, how do we take away the a reference photo so we can, so we can fill out the frame? Okay. Yeah. We'll get there here in a second. Um, so yeah. So now that I'm ready to close my selection, mm -hmm. I'm just going to click on this gray dot. Okay. It's going to be officially closed. And now I don't want to touch any more buttons. And the next thing I want to go to is my brush. And then I can immediately start drawing. Oh, shit. Oh. And then when you're done, you click on that little S again, mm -hmm. and then you're done. And then you're out of that. Thank you. And so, Dana, um, you need your reference photo moved? Yeah, I want to get rid of it so I can fill out the whole frame. Yeah, so whenever you're ready to get rid of the reference photo, you're just going to tap in the center of your screen. And then it's going to bring up a few options of like clear, import, image. And in the upper right. So we, we pass the image, the image itself. Yep. OK. Yep. And there's a little arrow or a little X in the upper corner. Yep. And click on that. And then it's gone. Okay. Yay! Yay! I like that. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then we can take away the layers. She might leave me on. Yes. It might work for me. I mean, I Oh, that's coming along work. nice. Oh, nice. I haven't I done the her. background yet. But... <laughs> Love it. Sandra, are you going to pop into class later and finish that? No. I don't know. I was going to go kayaking, but it's raining. So, in fact, I do have the afternoon free. Go kayaking. You don't have to spend no, it's raining. hours doing art. It's <laughs> raining. I don't want to go kayaking in the rain. Oh, I'm Lisa. Go yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Lisa, you need to brighten your highlights. Can you see that? The ones that are the brightest that are on the left side near the window. They're read they're not light, they're not lighter enough than the the mid-tones on that second half of the on the right side of the chair, you know, the seat of the chair, it looks the same. So yeah, nice Tosh. Oh my goodness, yeah. It that is the so good. Closed chair. you just did it. Wow, you can tell like the painterly instincts are coming in. These look good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely you can. Mm -hmm. Once you guys like have the tool down, it's just painting. It's oh, just getting the tool down. <laughs> Leah, thank you for having this class. Emma, thank you for doing this. I'm so excited. Yes. So we'll have three more. We'll have four more classes. Uh, Emma's going to do a class on the 22nd and the 29th of May. And then she'll do the 12th and the 26th of June. I will send this across the thread so that you know. 
Um, and I'll remind you each, I'll remind everybody each week. She's got finals next week. So she wants to do well with her finals and then she's moving. So, so we have two weeks off and then we'll do four more classes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I love yours too. This looks so cool. Aren't they neat? Yeah, they are. Oh, there you go, Lisa. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. And you can make your pen a little smaller for those highlights, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can control them a little bit more. Okay. The key is really to get the values right, right? Look at where your values are working. They're working like on the side of the bottom of the chair because it's so bright next to that dark. You want that same kind of contrast between your light and your mid your mid-tones. Okay. <laughs> These are so cool looking. All right. What I'd also like to do is um, let's go about five or 10 minutes. Is, is, Emma, can you finish it sort of on your end so they can watch and work with you? Yeah. Uh, and then we may go another five or 10 minutes over. And then, uh, and then if you're not done with your painting, I'd love you to finish it. And I'm going to post it on Instagram if you give me my, if you give me permission. So I'd like to post it on our Instagram to let people know about our classes. Yeah. Can't say I'm happy, but it's at, Come least, along. It's at least a moment of teaching, hmm. of learning. I have to jump off, but so it was to see everyone. Thank you, Tosh. Thanks for coming. Tosh, I have uh, a question, please. Oh, yeah. So I've now changed my background, mm -hmm. but it's coming through my animal. So is there a way that I can do something about that? Yeah, so it sounds, or it looks like um, it's like uh, transparent, your brush strokes. Um, so like, when the other thing goes, the background is under You're it. Hold it up again, Sandra. Right. So you can see it. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I lost it. So you can see the blue like... underneath him, and it's not supposed to be underneath him. So um, I'm guessing, did you draw it with a white background? Yes. So uh, I would do, if I were you, I'd either um, erase that blue where it's behind your animal or right. add a white behind it. Um, and I think that's, that's just because it's transparent. Um, so the colors you were getting were those colors with the whites underneath it. Does that but make why, sense? why are my colors transparent? Because uh, your brush is yeah. picks that brush, transparent layer on your brush. Can't mm -hmm. she just boost up the opacity? The opacity, color? I've done that. Um, no, because the, are the transparencies set on your brush? So as you're painting, it's like automatically like has a little and bit. And I can never change that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's. So that's the best thing is. is to. Layer. Mm -hmm. You could. Just like uh, painting. <laughs> you got a layer, right? If you put your first layer on white, it but, looks. So I put a layer of white underneath the animal. Wow. Yeah, that's what I would do if you want those exact colors that you had before. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, um, lots of different brushes have transparency to like make them feel like they're a natural medium. Um, and so I, some of them don't. So if you prefer not to, you can use those. Um, I like them because they have like some nice blending, um, but they do like change depending on what's underneath them. I like what I, I like to, I like that because to me that's like, that's painting. Right, you can't just put one layer of color down and it works. You need to layer several colors on top of each other. So this is a very painterly way of thinking about that. Yeah, that's probably why I prefer it too. Cause like, I'm mostly, or I guess, I learned painting before I learned this. Right, mm -hmm. as it should be. <laughs> as it should be. As it should be. <laughs> It's funny, I spend a lot of time with my iPad trying to make it feel like it's like it's paper um, in an actual medium. It's nice though, because you do have some tricks you can't really do with an actual medium. Like you can add underpainting on after and you can work a little bit faster, a little bit less messy, but also like you do have a different effect. It's never gonna be like on like it is on paper. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, you know, when you choose a new brush, 
and you get mm -hmm. this table. Mm -hmm. So what is, what are these three things, this spacing, yeah. jitter, and follow? Can you hold that up again, Sandra, so we can see it? Hold that up again. Yeah, so um, basically what that is, is those are like the settings on your brush that make the brush how it is. So if you want to change some aspects of it, you can. Um, your phone just went off, Emma. It's telling me that it's running low on battery here. Okay. Oh, I see what jitter is. Yeah, so what I like to do if I'm going to edit a brush is I'll duplicate it real quick. So I go to my brushes and I swipe right over here. To the left and it's going to give me share duplicate reset i'm going to click on duplicate and it's made that brush twice so i can now go to the eagle hawk one which is my new one if i click on it again it's going to bring up all those options and then you can go in here and you can mess around you can see what spacing right. does you can even like practice on here this is like a little area to play around. So you can kind of like edit your brushes however you want. Fall off is kind of nice. That's where it's like you want it to be a little bit lighter at the beginning. How are you, Sandra, are you using the fur brushes at all? No, no. Oh, interesting. Staying classic. I yeah. used, um, I used the grass. The grass one, okay. For this animal, I thought- That makes sense, because he's got a kind of grassy texture. Mm -hmm. I thought it looked better for him. Because his, like, so, yeah, Emma, his fur is shorter. Ooh. Cool. I'm going to use this thing you were talking about earlier, whereby I do an outline, and then I put the white underneath, right? Mm -hmm. Can you remind me how to do that, please? Yes. So. I'm going to go, I'm going to do it on here. Mm -hmm. What might be easiest, I'm going to make a new layer. You're annoying. So I've got a new layer with with this, like this. Do I need uh, to draw a line underneath him? Yes, it needs to be closed, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So you have two options. Let's, let's do your selection tool, I think would be the fastest. OK. So after I have my new layer, right. I can click on this little S looking tool, right. tool. I go to freehand and then at the bottom it says color fill. I'm gonna click on that. Right. I'm gonna go up to my colors and I wanna choose a white. So okay. I'm sliding the middle bar all the way to the right uh, or the left and the lower ball or bar all the way to the right. And now I have a perfect white. So I can leave my colors now. And then I'm going to outline my shape. My what about if I've already outlined it? It's too late. I need to do it again. Hmm? Yes, I can see I need to do it again. That's okay. Oh, okay. So I have it outlined. Are you going faster than me? Ah. <laughs> this thing is in the way. Um, the, uh, is the slider in your way? It wasn't a slider, it was the actual uh, tool. I think uh -huh. I just, I'm just moving him. Ah. Go away, thank you. <laughs> there is not a straight line since it's the animal. No. We okay, don't and now? Now we've got the really marching ends. And now I'm going to click on that gray circle. It's going to right. close my selection and automatically turn it white. Oh, perfect. So now I have to see what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I can click on that S again to unselect it. And now it's set in stone. Uh, and then now I can see that I can see the outline. I should have done it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to paint again, but. And then I can drag that color, that white, and you probably want to put it underneath your animal. Yeah, I've got it underneath. So now I need to paint him a bit more because now I can see the outline annoyingly. 
I should have done it slightly smaller. Do you know what you could do? Okay, let's do it um, together. Here, let me go back. See, because it looks like this. You can see part of the outline. Yeah, do you know what you could try? Try it, see if this helps. So I have, I'm on that white layer. Mm -hmm. And if I go to my magic wand, and I go to the- Oh, wait, so hold on, where does the magic wand live? Um, it's between the wrench and the little S. Got Everybody it. needs a magic wand, they can have access. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Yep. <laughs> um, if I go to like Gaussian blur, oh, my layers, I'm on the wrong. There we go. Right. If I'm I go to everybody working, head down and working. Goes in blur. Then I can drag my finger across. Oh, yeah. And it's going to make it really fuzzy. So it might soften those edges. So then. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see if it works. So now I need the fur and the other. So, yeah, that's a bit better. But that's what it looks like now. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Very nice. Well, it's okay. But I'm, I'm okay with it. It's not. I still feel very clumsy with the tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is for us. But at least I remembered to change layers each time. I didn't have any layer accidents. Yeah, that's definitely a learning curve. It's so <laughs> easy to like start drawing on a layer and then realize it's like in the wrong place. Can't say I'm happy, but. I did it. <laughs> no pain, no gain, Diana. Exactly. <laughs> I wish I had the paint pain no brush and go over. Pain, no yes. Yes, that's right, Victor. No pain, no gain. <laughs> you yeah. to, because you you're not just gonna learn the, the jargon. That's why sometimes you have to let mommy stay in your room late when you're when she's <laughs> Yeah, because I love my mommy. Yeah, because you love your mommy because she's the best. She deserves everything, right? Yeah. Um, kind of. Thank you. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Does anybody have more questions about this? Um, no, I'm yes. Do we need to save it? I, I it's have. automatically saved, right, Emma? Yep, it should be automatically saved. So cool. whenever you're done, you just go click on gallery and it should bring you right out. There it is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well, that was me too yeah. Do you guys remember how to send it to your phone so you can have it saved as an image? No. No. You can go over that real quick. I always like it, to... Oh, I just took a screen photo. Oh, okay. You could do that. Um, I think you would have to kind of crop it a little bit. Okay. Uh, and I don't know if it guarantees like the quality of the image, like the DPI. Probably not as good. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to save it. If you go to the wrench, you can click on that. Then I go Take to photo. The but we are now in the gallery. Okay, so we print. Take a photo. The wrench is next to the gallery. Should be right yeah. next to the gallery. Yeah, once you open the picture, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, so I click on share and it gives me a bunch of options. Um, and, and I can save it as a JPEG. So I click and what JPEG. about take a photo? Take a photo? Let me Under actions, there's take a photo. Oh, that's. Actions. No, no, but you taking a photo of something else. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wonder if that's taking a photo so you can then import it in. Exactly. That's exactly probably, what it is. Yeah, that's like, so you can. Not go through the bother of uploading it, just mm -hmm. bringing it. Okay, so I have a class at, uh, in, at, that starts at half past the hour in about 20 minutes. Anybody else have questions before we start, before we end? No, I need That's time to go and actually get dressed. Yes, yeah, well, whatever. Fast <laughs> or not. You pants are optional in Zoom classes. We all know that. <laughs> um, so there is a so I'll be doing a three hour just free uh, drawing and painting. That means that you can bring your own project and work on it. Uh, you can bring this over if you want to, and I'll do what I can to help. 
or you can work on any of your other drawing or painting projects. Uh, it'll be at the same Zoom link. So just come back on it. This video will be up, I don't know, hopefully tomorrow. I'll send a link across. Um, and uh, Abby, I'll send you all the deets on your free class, okay? Uh, we appreciate you joining us. Was it fun, even though it was a little chaotic? <laughs> She's like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, great uh, work today, everybody. We'll see you all again on May 15th. And oh. good luck with your finals, Emma. Thank Knock you. it out of the park. Thanks. Thank you. Right. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Emma. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Emma.